Hi. How are you? Bien. Hi, Linda. Good morning. How are you? It's nice to see you. You have a roof. <laughs> For Carmen Torres Gonzalez, this home in San Lorenzo, Puerto Rico, is an answer to a year of prayers. Este uno de los cuartos que no había nada. But the roof, the ceiling, everything, the walls, completely intact, completely rebuilt. A far cry from last September when her house was razed to the ground. When Hurricane Maria collided against the island with winds of more than 150 miles per hour. We met her six months ago, when more than 20 years of her life had been reduced to nearly nothing. Its roots lay bare. The living room, the kitchen. I want my house back. Now, her home is her castle. You have walls and a roof and your family. Even as the island slowly rebuilds, the scars left by Hurricane Maria are still deeply felt throughout this U.S. territory. Nearly 45,000 still live under tarps, only meant to be a temporary fix. And of course, the damage you can't see, the wounds that cannot heal, the many lives lost. We can't let them die. And I, we need help, all the help we can get, please. From the beginning, the death toll has been controversial. What is your death count as of this moment, 17? 16 certified. 16 people certified. That official number went up to 64, but last December, the New York Times put it much higher, at more than 1,000. And just last month, a study from George Washington University concluded that nearly 3,000 people died by causes directly related to the hurricane and its aftermath. We were counting deaths that might have been caused by the storm in an indirect way, such as, you know, the transportation breakdown, power going out, inability of people to get their medication, or even the kind of work stress that might be involved with having to go long distances to get food and water and fuel for your family. I think we did a fantastic job in Puerto Rico. We're still helping Puerto Rico. Some question whether those indirect deaths should count in the official toll, including the president, who tweeted 3,000 people did not die in the two hurricanes that hit Puerto Rico, and falsely accused Democrats of inflating the death toll in order to make me look as bad as possible. Still a lot of blue tarps. And but on the ground, survivors like Rebecca Morales say the death of loved ones, like that of her brother-in-law, should most definitely be counted. He didn't pass away, he didn't die the day the hurricane mm -hmm. happened. No, but. but he was already sick and, and he was a, a kidney patient. Dialysis was what was keeping Morales' brother-in-law, Jose Jimenez Aleman, alive. When the power went out in his hometown of San Sebastian, the local center's dialysis machines failed. How long did he go after the hurricane without being able to get his dialysis? I, I think it was uh, two to three weeks. Within months, Aleman's health declined, and in April, he passed away. Do you believe if he had proper care sooner that he would have survived? Yes. Longer? That's what I strongly believe. He, he, he couldn't be here doing this interview and talking to you. My sister is coping, still coping. He was her life, you know. They were married for 28 years. Yeah. She has no house. She has no husband. She is a loss. San Juan's mayor, Carmen Yulín Cruz, says she's heard too many of these stories. We saw the president react in a way where he said the numbers may not be credible. What do you think, as a public official here in Puerto Rico on the ground, what do you think? Why did he think he was going to gain by continuing to politicize this? This is Trump's Katrina. Lives were lost on the president's watch, and that will follow him forever. And one year later, Mayor Cruz says the road to recovery still looms long. So is the island, is San Juan, ready for another Cat 5 or Cat 4 storm? No, we're not ready for Cat 1. So what still needs to be rebuilt? What still oh, well, needs fixing? Roads, bridges, um, in San Juan alone, between 
2,603,000 2, roofs, um, schools, you know, almost almost everything. It, it almost is as if we've just woken up from a severe trauma. Construction must happen, but also what are we going to change so that this doesn't happen again? Despite all the challenges, signs of hope sprouting throughout the island. Mother Nature showing her majesty once again. <laughs> and infrastructure inching back, like this bridge that had been swept away. It was completely destroyed. And we saw people right after the hurricane trying to get across the water, hanging onto a rope that was stretched across. And now it's fully open and completely in use. Houses with no roofs, they're all blue. This is my second trip back to Puerto Rico since Maria. This island, a place my family has long called home. Eight months ago, I joined my sister, Jennifer, and her boyfriend, Alex, to witness the devastation firsthand. You, you, get, you do what you can and you know, you hope it's going to help. Outside of Old San Juan, we met Porfirio Torres, his house destroyed. The home of this man, still with a hole in the roof. We've got one of the blue FEMA tarps that's covering this opening right here. He has no front door. His door has blown off. It's actually leaning right here on the wall of his home. Thanks to donations, Don Porfirio was able to rebuild his roof. Oh my gosh, a vaulted roof even. It looks amazing. This was all gone, all gone, and now it's rebuilt. And under her new roof, Torres Gonzalez says she's beginning to see promises of healing to come. She said they have a home that keeps them dry, where they can eat, where they can sleep, and they have their health, and she's super grateful for all of that. For this part of America, their future depends on their story not being forgotten. For Nightline, I'm Linda Lopez in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.